Okay, so let's go over our GI medications here. Whenever we want to prevent a peptic ulcer or with someone who has a history of gastritis or just a heartburn issue, an overproduction of acid issue, we will issue one of three medications to bring down that acid production. Now, just like any other medication we give, just like your insulins, just like your pain medication, we always use um, the rules of three. So we always have a mild, moderate, and um, severe type of uh, therapeutic approach. And we always come at different angles. If you haven't noticed that already, in terms of um, pharmacology. So just like if your blood pressure is too high, you can give a diuretic to decrease the volume, you can work on the actual heart itself, um, you can give a blocker to block that beta, you can give a calcium channel blocker to soften up that heart. There's a bunch of angles we can take in controlling uh, at least blood pressure in and of itself. So just like that, we're taking the same approach to your GI as well. So let's talk about it here. We have anti-acids that is usually a first line approach when someone ever has a overproduction of acids. And you've probably taken anti-acids before. They come in the form of Tums. Um, Tums are just those anti-acids, usually a calcium-based um, type of buffer to buffer out that acid. We eat those, or we take those base, that kind of alkalinic um, anti-acid, that chalky tum, to almost act like it's a fire extinguisher and put out that flame. You know what I mean? Because I don't know if you've ever had, that's a funky esophagus, huh? <laughs> but I don't know if you ever had, um, if you've ever had heartburn before. Heartburn, also called um, GERD, um, basically there's that reflux disease that's really causing a pain right at the orifice between your esophagus and your stomach. So, what we do is we give your patient, or even give yourself, something to neutralize these fires brewing. Now, anti-acids themselves, they work really quick. They work in about uh, 30 minutes, not even that, 20 minutes. And guys, it's just like um, a fire extinguisher. It'll work instantly. It'll work quick, but the only problem is you have to make sure that you're popping those anti-acids after you take anything in that's harsh or eat anything harsh. So if you're eating those chilies, if you're eating heavy meats, or if you're having way too much coffee, or patients can have dairy and cause an overproduction of acid and have to pop those after they eat. So. If we're talking about insulins, okay, if we're relating our GI tract to insulins kind of in a loose, very loose connection here, your fast acting um, GI antiacids would be like your fast acting insulins, right? So these are the fastest acting, your antiacids here, okay? Now your H2 blockers, what the heck is an H2 blocker? Sorry. <laughs> so an H2 blocker comes from the, um, that's a class of anti-acid. We get H2 because it's a histamine 2. You see there's gastric parietal cells inside our GI tract. And these little cells in your GI tract, they secrete 
acid. And this acid comes in the form of HCl. And we know that hydrogen ions are very, very acidic. So these hydrogen ions, if we have an overproduction of them, um, they can become very, very acidic. Something about H2, though, is that there's histamines. That H stands for 2. Histamines are released that cause an inflammation. And that inflammation can cause irritation and breakdown and lead to a peptic ulcer, is what we call it. Peptic ulcer is just a fancy, fancy term for a hole in the lining of your stomach. Peptic stomach, okay? So if there's a hole in the lining of your stomach, that is not good. It's called a perforation of the stomach. All the acids get out, and you can become infected inside your peritoneal cavity. Not good. And you can bleed out very heavily that way, too. So, to prevent these peptic ulcers from happening, and to protect the lining of the um, stomach itself and the GI tract itself, We'll prescribe, the doctors will prescribe something called H2 blockers, those histamine blockers to bring down that inflammation and protect the lining of the actual stomach itself. So what it does is it turns down the volume of HCl production. And in turning down the volume of the stomach acids, what happens is that... Um, the stomach acids are decreasing their volume and not producing that very acidic hydrochloride, okay? So if you have hypersensitivity to um, alcohol or tell your patients to avoid alcohol at all when taking this. Um, let me see here. What else do I want to tell you here? One thing I wanted to say is that H2 blockers the way that helps me remember it is I remember H2 almost like a radio station. Cool. So I remember H2 kind of like, um, did I say radio station? What I meant was um, blockers like a football players, okay? So football players, um, there's blockers in terms of um, linemen. I don't know if you know anything about football, but this helps you to, just to kind of remember. H2 blockers, there's a position on a football team that requires blockers, okay? People, all they do is block and protect the quarterback, the guy throwing the ball. So, I remember that because they have constantly dirty jerseys from playing football all day. So they need um, tie-dye, or basically tied, to clean their jerseys. So if we know that these blockers, these football players, need tied to clean their jerseys, and football players always like to play loud music, and we're constantly saying, Ah, turn, the, turn that music down. Turn down the volume. Turn down the volume of your stomach producing this acid. And um, that would, I guess, help us to remember turning down the volume of acid of these H2 blockers. And our suffix is tied, tie-dine. I know it's a very loose connection, but hopefully that kind of helps you. But let's go into PPI inhibitors next.